Is your code broken? Not working? Ridden with errors? Are you banging your head against the wall in sheer frustration? Well, no more. In this video, we aim to solve all your problems by teaching you the art of troubleshooting. So without further ado, let's get into tip number one, which is doing the output display. Now, if you don't know how to do this, you simply go onto the view tab and there's all these things we can display. Most of them we really don't need to worry about, but output down here, you can see I already have it enabled, but if I click, it will disappear. And if I click again, it will reappear and there it is. Now the output is our eyes into the internal workings of Roblox Studio. And so if anything goes wrong with our code, this is where it's going to appear. Now we get lots of other messages here as well. You can see I have this plugin called QPaint. So that prints in the output to tell me that it started. You may also see information uh, about auto recovery files and lots of other things. What we're interested in are the error codes, which will appear down here in red. Because if you don't know what your error is and what the problem is, then how can you solve it? So knowing what the error is to begin with is very important. So I'll show you what I mean here. If I add a new script in and we've got the print hello world and let's go ahead and just change it. So instead of print, we add an extra N in print. And if I run that, you can see straight away down the output, we've got this red error. AKA it's not working. It's not done what we wanted it to do. And we wouldn't have known that if we didn't have the output, we would be completely in the dark. But if we've got the output visible, that at least gives us the starting point. That's the entry point. Now, you might not always understand what these errors mean. That's fine. Attempt to go call global print a nil value. Now, in this case, it's reasonably obvious. What it's saying is it's talking about this print with two ends. Now we've got to think, has, does anything called print with two ends exist? Well, if we head back to our code and we maybe realize, ah, yes, it's not supposed to be print with two ends. That was a typo. It's supposed to be one end. And that is leads us into my second tip, number two, which is check for typos. Now, we all make typos all the time. Now, thankfully, in Roblox Studio, it does try to make it a little bit easier because just like in any word editor, if we type something incorrectly, we'll get a little red line underneath it. And if I put my cursor over it, you'll notice it says unknown global princat. Doesn't know what that is. And if you run it, it's not going to work as we just saw. So we can see this while we're editing the code. If something doesn't look right, then it's not right. So it could be, and when you see when I type out print, it changes to blue, which means it's one of uh, Roblox's keywords. Uh, so print is a inbuilt function that we can use. Similarly, if we got rid of the quotes here and we try to print that, you'll notice I've got a red line underneath world uh, it's a bit confused what I'm trying to do. If I run that, uh, this is a less obvious error. It's saying that a bracket is expected near world. So you'd be like, okay, maybe I need to add in another bracket or maybe you should delete world. And then you'll see if you run that, then it's trying to print out the value of hello, which it's trying to find a variable and the variable is nil, it doesn't exist. So you always got it all the time, you're trying to go back to your code, looking at your code, thinking, does it exist? And use that output constantly to help you. If you've got a red line in the code editor, something doesn't look right, then it probably isn't right. The same with variables. Um, so you could call a variable variable and assign it value of 10, but you can't just name anything for example, I couldn't name a variable print and name it 10. Again, I've got a red line underneath it. 
built-in global print is overwritten here. So it's telling me that I can't use this name because print is solely reserved for using as part of the print function, like that. Uh, you also can't use numbers as variable names. So if I gave 10 equals 10, that's not going to work either. Or if my variable name was something like uh, 10th February equals 10. Again, not going to work if you have numbers at the beginning. Now I could have February 10 and that would be fine. You see, there's no red line underneath it. It's absolutely fine. And I could print that out if I wanted to and I would get 10. Now the third tip is using print statements to check the values. So we're going to exit out of this and we're going to look at a script I made quickly earlier. It's a little calculator script and all it does is one function calculate takes two parameters. One is a number and the other one is the operation you want to calculate. So addition, subtraction, multiplying or dividing. So if I run this now, it will uh, work fine. So we're saying send 20 and add. So add 10 to 20 and we just print that out. If I run that, we can see we've got 30 just as you'd expect. Now, if it doesn't go to plan, let's say I Miss, I mistyped this. So instead of add, I put too many letters in. Now, I've not immediately obvious I've made a mistake here. Because this is a string, it's all in green. So there's no red line underneath it. And if I run the game, I'm not going to get any errors down here either. Because the function is going through all of these if statements it doesn't equal add, sub, mult, or div, and so it just ends. So it's not obvious at all where I've gone wrong. So how I would troubleshoot this is I was adding a print statement to the top, and I would just check that these variables are what I expect them to be. So I would just say print operation, not in capitals, print operation, so checking what this variable is that we've sent to it, which in this case is as out of, and if we run that, we've got that printed out in the output. And then hopefully I would realize then that, ah, this isn't the data I'm supposed to be sending it to. I'm supposed to just send add. And so if I run that now, we would get 30 again, as we'd expect. Now, another thing that we could do to help here is let's say inside of this add block I had another if statement and let's say it's just completely broken so I'll just type out a load of meaningless things yep that's clearly not going to work is it so if I run the game now you'll see I've got all these errors I'm not really sure what they all mean and if I head back to the code maybe I'm not quite sure how I want to go about fixing this yet? Well, you can see it tells me what line it's on. It says workspace.calculator colon five. And that five is telling me that the problem is on line five at the moment. Now, there might be other errors present, but line five is what it's concerned with at the moment. So instead of trying to fix it, I could simply comment it out. So if I comment out the block, and I rerun it, then I've got 30. Now, this doesn't actually exist. Uh, this is looking for a global variable. And so in this case, it just ignores it because it doesn't exist. But if we, uh, if we change this so that this was broken as well, and we ran that, then again, we've got another error here, and it's telling us on line four this time. So if I go back and I'll uncomment this, and you know what, let's just comment out this entire block because I just want to check for now that it's printing out the num plus 10 and then I'm going to come back to this later. This is an excellent idea you can do. It's just comment out certain bits, run the code, see if it works and then you know, yeah, it's definitely this part that is broken 
this is what I need to look at. It's all about trying to isolate the issue and that is what troubleshooting comes down to. Uh, hopefully this has helped. Any suggestions, leave them down in the comments or join me over on the Discord. That's all for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.